sao in ring shring ka e la ring asang ka hala ring ta ka la ring sao ain kling ring shring Namaste. So, last night I was thinking about the relation between atheism and the apocalyptic visions that so many people have today. Uh, we see it in videos, we hear it in music, we read it in novels, uh, stories, and so on that many, many people can see that our whole civilization, our, our global culture, is headed for a period of devastation and destruction, collapse, dysfunction, and so on. But why is that? Well, the roots of it, the, the symptoms are in the news every day, but the, the causes, the roots of it, are much more subtle. And this was brought out in a discussion that we had this morning on our developer channel, the volunteers who were working on our course site, had one of them had a really, really good question. And I want to share that with you and also some of the ensuing discussion. This young fellow of Indian descent living in the U.S. writes, I'm having a bit of a struggle figuring out what to do with my life. I know for sure that I don't want to live for pleasure, as it is only leading to suffering. I also don't have an overwhelming desire for enlightenment either, which probably means I will have to suffer more in order to reach that stage. So I don't want to live a traditional life filled with pleasure and experiences, but I also don't want to become an ascetic. However, I do have an extreme desire to make a positive impact on the world. My theory is that taking care of the planet and ensuring the healthy survival of all mankind, especially impoverished areas, will enable many people to begin to evolve on a conscious level since they won't have to worry about survival and or illness caused by a polluted environment anymore. It sounds very noble, but I'm afraid that doing something like this will actually become counterproductive to their evolution, since it would effectively be removing amounts of their suffering, which, as I understand, is necessary for spiritual growth. Deep understanding for such a young feller. <laughs> but really, it's quite obvious, and a lot of people I know have similar ideals and desires. So how can we achieve this? Huh? Well, first of all, you have to understand the nature of the material world. The Buddha taught that the material world is anicca, dukkha, anatta. It's impermanent, it's unsatisfactory or suffering, and it's not self. So any plan that we have to do good in the world can never, first of all, can never do good to everybody and probably could never do good to the people who need it most. And we see in history for thousands of years, so many big, big plans and plan makers have come and gone. And is humanity any better off? I mean, maybe materially we have a few more toys and there are less people below the stage of abject poverty. But still, the majority of people are suffering, and they are, in effect, slaves of the people who, or the economic elite, the social elite, the governmental elite, powers that be. So this is the root of the problem. Income inequality leads to power inequality, which leads to big, big problems on a social scale, on a global level. So how do we deal with this? 
And then there's the environmental issues too. Oh boy, big, big problems. The root of it all is atheism. Why are people suffering bad karma? And on a collective scale, because so many people have bad karma, so many people are caught up in cruelty like meat eating or industrial scale farming. Uh, anytime we try to concentrate, whether it's food production, wealth, knowledge, technical skills, or whatever, anytime we try to centralize and organize, this leads to inevitable collapse. Just look at history. Huh? There's a wonderful saying by Arnold Toynbee, those who do not study history are condemned to repeat it. And so what are we doing now? We're building this global technical infrastructure, the internet, which is based on another one below that, the uh, electricity producing structure, which is based on another one below that, which is the oil producing industry, which is based on the economic system, which is based on the political system. And it's a pyramid, you see? And as soon as people in general lose faith in the system, the whole thing collapses. There's a certain limit, there's a tipping point. And various people have forecasted that we're going to reach that very soon, huh? for, for a long time going back. But the point is we're on the tipping point all the time. And the, the tipping point is how we choose to live our lives and the views that we have. If we have the view that humanity is the pinnacle of creation and we are like gods and we can create our own reality, we can do whatever we want, that is going to lead to bad karma, which is going to lead to suffering and collapse. Why? Because guess who's really in charge of the world? Not people, not governments, not banks, God. So when we don't worship God, when we don't approach God, when we don't try to please God, we create bad karma by thinking, we are the doers. We are making all the decisions. See, because our knowledge is limited. The human brain is not sufficiently intelligent to comprehend reality. Huh? Look, don't believe me. Take a trip out into the forest and watch the birds and animals. Watch the trees and the weather. See how it all works together. Try to comprehend it with your intelligence. You can't. Whoever designed this system, this ecology, is far, far more intelligent than any human being. So there has to be a God. There has to be a creator, a maintainer. And because of that, also a destroyer. So this is the inevitable cycle of existence in the material world. That things are created, they last for some time, and then they disappear. But we think our silly abstractions, like corporations, philosophies, religions, governments, and so on, are there forever. Huh? But... There's a beautiful poem by Ezra Pound called Ozymandias. Ozymandias is a poem about a traveler in the desert who finds the ruins of a great city. And he finds a tablet on which is inscribed this epic poem glorifying the ruler, Ozymandias. And so Ozymandias goes on to boast about all his great accomplishments and his great city and all this stuff and everything. And at the end he says, look on my works, ye powerful and despair. So ironic. Every empire, every civilization in history has collapsed sooner or later. And they all collapse for the same reasons. Centralization, organization, 
the abstractions created by human beings. So what is the answer? Vedic culture is a decentralized, non-hierarchical, female-based, uh, it's based on the feminine energy and spiritual culture. Okay, so we don't get all caught up in words. Let's take my neighbor, for example. My neighbor in India has like five acres of land. Four acres of that is rice fields. One acre of that, he has like a dozen cows. He makes a good living. He's completely independent. He inherited the land from his family. He farms, he raises like three or four crops a year of rice, depending on rainfall. He sells milk every day from his cows. And the guy is completely free to do whatever he wants. He wears just a simple lungi, huh? except in rainy season, he never wears a shirt. He's always outdoors. He's really healthy, strong guy. Huh? And he lives just like his father and grandfather and great grandfather. I mean, yeah, he has electricity, he has a tractor, but if those things went away, he wouldn't, he wouldn't despair. He knows perfectly well how to do everything he needs to do without them. And he has the means. And not only that, he has the skill, the knowledge, how to live in harmony with nature, how to live in harmony with God. We live in a temple area there are many temples, sev well, several temples. And of course, in, in the greater area around Arunachala, there are many temples. This is a holy place. So the ancient ways are preserved. You see, the decentralization of resources and production. This is robust society. The modern, just-in-time, centralized dispatch and management of resources is always going to collapse. Why? Black swans. Complex systems always have unanticipated failure modes. Ask any software engineer. Even if you debug each and every software module completely, when you put them together, they still will fail unexpectedly. And this is the case with society as well. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's our New York say. <laughs> so the bigger and more complex a society is, when it crashes, oh boy, the damage and the destruction is even worse. So how do we deal with this? Well, we have 700 videos on this channel about how to deal with this. And they all basically say the same thing, which is get out of the system, become independent, start your own small business, be your own boss, take enough time off that you can engage in spiritual culture. Don't be anybody's slave. Don't be anybody's follower. Go to the scriptures directly yourself. And we've given access to all the original scriptures understand them, follow them, do the puja, do the meditation, huh? follow the advice of the sages, begin from the beginning, karma yoga. Then all by itself, bhakti yoga, dhyana, huh? raja yoga, and eventually jnana yoga will develop if you simply follow the ways of life, the achara, sadachara, the eternal way of life which means living in relationship with God. So if you do this, not only will you be happy, uh, because God pleases from within. You can't understand this unless you experience it. If you do these spiritual practices, you'll become happy uh, without any apparent cause. What do you know? And the other thing that you can experience is that if you get any kind of wealth or property or opulence like 
fame, beauty, money, power, uh, knowledge, renunciation, whatever, these will not satisfy you. They always leave something to be desired. That's because the universe is dukkha. It's unsatisfactory. It's built that way by God. Why? So that you will eventually turn within and worship. Chant your mantra, do your puja, do your meditation, and find your way home. Om Tatsa. Om Shakti Om.